like the collapse of the Berlin Wall, the explosion of enterprise in China. So you can read about that in the news media, or I can hear about it from my spies. <laughs> I much prefer that. And in, well, for example, in Nelson Mandela's first speech in Johannesburg, my spies were there. Hmm. That was a historic event, obviously. And to have someone tell me what the tone was, the feeling was, yes. the, you know, just the celebration of the people. Mm -hmm. And to just duplicate that in place after place, and country after country, strange things going in the wilds of Ireland. I wouldn't have thought anything was going on in the wilds of Ireland. What there is. Iceland. If I can place a spy in Iceland, Shloma, which is truly in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. no <clears throat> offense to the Icelanders, but really it is. It's a tiny little island in, in literally near frozen land with an amazing geography and very interesting things going on hmm. in Iceland. And of course, um, when the terrorist attack in New York occurred, my spies were on the street before the towers fell down to the ground. They were in the tower, beside the tower, and several of them were photographing the whole scene. Hmm. So, you know, you want to see what New York was like on that fateful day. You know, you, you can Google a whole bunch of images. I just look at my private photographs, which no one else but me and my spies have seen. Hmm. Or look at my correspondence, which is all recorded. And I remember an email from one of my spies who had arrived in New York and was telling me about, again, the feeling of the place, the tone of the place, and described, of course, his challenges finding housing, which in Manhattan is an enormous endeavor. Mm -hmm. And his concluding line was, and when I look out of my window, I can see the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And a week later, he couldn't. That's one of Larry's big secrets. His spies are real and have been in operation for a quarter of a century. Now, Shlomo, in case you think I'm lying about this, mm -hmm. just in case you think I'm mm -hmm. having an, an attack of fantasy or senil advanced senility or something, yeah. just in case, mm -hmm. there was something. There's always surprises in life. Mm -hmm. And one of the surprises in my life, well, there <laughs> more than one, but one in particular, because I take pride in my spies, I welcome the intelligence they provide me. Mm -hmm. They keep me out of trouble, avoid me saying stupid things which are wrong, mm -hmm. but they can alert me to in advance. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Learned to listen. Mm -hmm. But it was quite a revelation one day. It's amazing how stupid I can also be. Uh, there's no, that's, of course, not a secret. Um, when I was commenting to one of the spies on something that uh, was suitable. And then he said to me, you know, Larry, there's one thing you're forgetting about all your spies who spy for you. You keep forgetting that we also spy on you. <laughs> so I'd have trouble lying to you, wouldn't I? Because hmm. one of the spies had called me on it. Oh. And so, that's one of my big secrets. And you know the best way to keep a secret mm -hmm. is to leave it out in the open. Mm -hmm. So the more I refer to my spies, mm -hmm. the more my students think I'm joking. <laughs>